Is this a good NBA draft? That will be the debate with Tony Jones of The Athletic. Plus, what does the lottery tonight mean for the Utah Jazz? It's all coming up next on today's edition of Locked on Jazz. You are Locked on Jazz, your daily podcast on the Utah Jazz. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. David Locke, radio voice of the Utah Jazz, Jazz NBA insider. Today's Locked on Jazz. We'll have Tony Jones of The Athletic. I can hear you cheering because you're fired up for that. Everybody's been asking to have the guy on the show. We can debate about whether the NBA draft is a good or bad one, what the lottery means tonight. We'll look at some of the players. Can the Thompson Twins actually shoot enough to be good NBA players? Who are the other guys that Tony loves that maybe our numbers didn't love so much? What does it mean for the Jazz to be 9 or 10 tonight? In the lottery, and gosh, what would it mean if they're one, two, or three, or four? Please, 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 please. Plus, we'll look ahead to the Jazz. Do they win 26, 36, or 46 next year? And who possibly plays point guard? All of those coming up on today's edition with Tony Jones. I'm David Locke, radio voice of the Utah Jazz, Jazz NBA Insider. And this is Locked on Jazz, your daily podcast on the Utah Jazz. Give you insight, expertise, geeky numbers, lots of them, and hopefully making it way better to be a Jazz fan. Thank you. Very much for making Locked on Jazz your first listen of the day. We are free, available on all podcasting apps as well as on YouTube. Subscribe, follow, hit the bell button on YouTube so you get notified right away. And thank you very much for all of you that are everydayers. Today's show is brought to you by GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, use the code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Last-minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. It's game time. Are we ready? Here he comes. He is the great... Tony Jones. And I muted you, which I didn't mean to. Now, it's yeah, the Tony Jones. So you just didn't even want me to talk. I wouldn't say great, though. I would just say Tony Jones. Well, I think you're great. I mean, if we need a little, if we needed to talk, and we do have better help as a sponsor. So, I mean, depending what you need, you let me know. But if you're not feeling great, you should be feeling great about yourself. You're doing playoff coverage covering the Nugs. Get ready for the Nuggets Lakers. But I want to talk to you back about the Jazz. All right, Tony. I ran the numbers on this draft, on these guys, and I I haven't watched them like you have. I I openly admit this. Um, But after five years now, we actually have a little number system that actually kind of seems to work a little bit, at least. Um, And this draft didn't come out great on the numbers. In fact, it didn't come out very good at all. And yet I've heard you say multiple times that you think this is a fabulous draft. You've even got some numbers on how deep you think it is. Sell me on why the 2023 draft is actually a good one. Oh, I think this is one of the best drafts that I've, ever, that I've seen in a long time. Point blank. All right. You're going to have to convince me this because I look, at, I oh, look at Scoot Henderson I, and his GP you, numbers are terrible. Oh, I look, I at, I look at Keontae oh. George and his transition numbers are terrible. I look at Nick Smith and he... Uh, and Jalen Hood, Stephen, uh, and uh, Short Thompson and Amin, and Amin Thompson both seem to be incredible athletes. All this, and then they're playing high school and they're shooting like uh, numbers. Okay. So sell me. I mean, I don't know what you want me to say. You on? It's 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 a deep draft. It's a top heavy draft. It's a draft that you're going to be able to get value uh, all the way through the first round. Uh, and through the second round as, as well. Uh, it's got role players. It's got, um, obviously, it's got the, the generational type. It's got the top-end talent beyond that. Um, I mean, it's just, a, it's just a really, really, really good draft. It's a very dynamic draft all the way through. I don't know what your number's telling you, but if somebody came to me and said, hey, well, what you're saying to me, like, you're saying, hey, Tony, I don't think it's a good draft. I would just say you're crazy. All right. It's a- so, so let's look at, like, how many do you think there are? Or so, Victor, okay, franchise-changing, all-pro, top 15, all-NBA player, no question. Uh, or possible. I mean, how many other guys do you think in this draft could be all-NBA one day? Uh, I think Scoot Henderson could possibly be all-NBA one day. I think Brandon Miller could be all-NBA. I think Amon Thompson could be all-NBA. Uh, I think – so I think – uh, at minimum, you're looking at those three guys. Um, and then, you know, I think, you know, here's the thing with drafts. They depend a lot on where the guy lands. And it depends on 
you know, the team that 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 drafts them. It depends on developing them. And the thing that I like about this draft is I like how many guys that I look at and I can see just being dynamic defensive players. You don't win in today's NBA if you can't stop the other guy at playoff time. And then you look at people like Taylor Hendricks and you look at people like uh, you look at people like Jarris Walker, and those are dynamic defensive players uh, out of the power forward spot. You look at both Thompson twins, you look at Anthony Black, you look at Kaysen Wallace, those are dynamic players uh, defensively uh, out of the point guard spot. I think the, the, the mistake that people make is that we look at drafts and we say, oh, this guy can't do that. Oh, this guy can't do this. Oh, this guy can't do that. What and the mistake is you got to look at what the guys can do and then you have to bet on your development. So if I'm the Utah Jazz and I get the fourth pick and Amon Thompson is right there and I'm looking at Amon Thompson and I say, okay, he can't shoot the ball. Okay, but he's six foot six with a seven foot wingspan. He's one of the he'll be one of the top ten athletes in the draft. I mean in the NBA from the moment he steps onto the NBA floor. He's, he's a natural point guard by trade. He's a dynamic defender. He's a dynamic playmaker. And he's a competitive kid who's going to work on his craft. I will bet that the shooting gets better. And um, let me just go back to another thing. The, the OTA thing is silly because I've seen the Thompson Twins cook pros. I saw the Thompson Twins in the basketball tournament where – these are high level pros playing uh, for a high level amount of money. And these guys were the best, were the best players on the floor in the game that they played against and the game that they played. And these are guys that are, were four, five, six, seven, eight years older than them. So I, I, I really do think that when we talk about, oh, well, they're 20 years old and they're playing in OT, OTE and you see in the competition, you know, I just think that that's, you know, just a bunch of malarkey. Um, because those guys, uh, I've seen those guys play up. I've seen those guys play guys that are bigger, stronger, more, more experienced. And I've seen those guys do the same things that they did to the guys that are younger than them. So do you think, do you think both the Thompson twins are stars of the making, or do you think Amon's much better? So I think Amon is a guy that if the shooting hits, I think he's an all pro because He's a natural point guard. He's when we say he's an elite athlete, like that's, you know, he's an elite athlete. I mean, he is a top 1% athlete in the NBA the minute he gets to the NBA. So, you know, if the shooting hits, if the shooting doesn't hit, he's a good NBA player. He's a starting level point guard, even if the shooting doesn't hit. If the shooting hits, you're looking at somebody who's going to make all NBA teams. Now, uh, Asar Thompson, I look at him right now, and I think he reminds me of Andre Iguodala. Uh, he's not the lead primary point primary point guard type that his brother is, partially because he's played with his brother, so he played off the ball a lot. Um, but, you know, he's a terrific athlete in his own right. He's a terrific playmaker in his own right. Uh, he's actually a better shooter than his brother, uh, and he's also a dynamic defender. So, you know, one the difference is one is a point guard and one is a small forward at this uh, at this point. Um, but, you know, I think both of those guys uh, are guys who can be high level pros um, because I think that they're competitive. I think that they're going to work on their craft. I think, you know, the intel tells me that they're workers and, you know, those are guys uh, those are guys that have quite a bit of talent coming into the league. He's Tony Jones of The Athletic. It's one of the few guys, I'll give you, give you a lot, I, I mean this very seriously. It's one of the few guys who actually dabbles in both. Like, I don't even try to pretend. To, uh, this time of year, I'll go watch guys. I'll spend, you know, tonight watching guys when the games are over. But uh, Tony Jones is one of the very few guys in, around who watches the NBA and watches enough of college to be able to see both. And the reason I think that's super important is I hear too many guys who just watch college try to tell me who's going to play in the NBA, and I realize they don't understand the NBA. Tony has the unique perspective that he spends his whole year in the NBA, but he watches enough college. He's able to dabble in both. I'm going to make him be negative in a minute, though. 
I'm going <laughs> to force it on him because the numbers say that two players out of the top 10 every year bust. Who are the two most likely to bust? And what is the impact of tonight's lottery on the Jazz if they end up at 10 instead of 9, or obviously if they end through 1 through 4? We'll talk about those things with Tony as we continue here on Locked on Jazz. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at Murdoch Hyundai. Murdoch Hyundai located at 4646 South State Street, also located in Logan and in Linden. Murdoch Hyundai has the great lineup of the SUVs from the Kona to the Tucson to the Santa Fe to the Palisade. And I'm driving a Santa Cruz right now, which is super fun. It's a truck, but it's got a four-door car bed in it with the truck in the back. Pretty awesome hybrid mix. And at the Mur- at the Hyundai, you get the incredible customer service that is the Murdoch family. That is over 80 years in Utah doing what they do with all the great deals. If you're going to stop by in Linden, if you're going to stop by in Logan, or if you're going to stop by at Murray, please email me first at dlock09 at gmail.com and let us get you set up with a locked on VIP experience that all the everydayers deserve. Check out the Ionic 6 and then tell me what I should do. Do I do it? Do I, for the first time ever in my life, like upgrade a car just because it looks cool? Oh my gosh, the Ionic 6 is so cool. I've got the five, but the six looks so cool. Go check it out at Murdoch Hyundai. Today's show is also brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks with a locked on, you get the $100 deposit match with Prize Picks. That's right. First time users, download the Prize Picks app at prizepicks.com or go to your app store and download those Prize Picks. Use the promo code locked on. And you get yourself a $100 deposit match up to, well, $100. Plus, right now, every day of the NBA playoffs, prize picks will select one person to have a chance to be a millionaire. One entry placed after 8 a.m. Eastern will be randomly selected each day. Whoever's placed this entry will be given a six-pick flex with the following payout. Six for six, a million bucks. Five for five, 80,000. Four for six, 16,000. Full details can be found at prizepicks.com slash million. You must opt in at that link to be eligible for the million dollar entry. It's all at prizepicks. Remember, promo code locked on gets you the $100 deposit match. He is Tony Jones. Nice enough to be with us today. All right, Tony, I know you're Mr. Positive, but who are the two in the top 10 most likely to bust? Oh, wait a sec. I muted you again during the commercial break. Now I have to bring you back. I, you know, I don't think he's going to bust because I think that. Who's this? uh, Sorry, we didn't hear the name. I didn't say the name yet. Oh, okay. Oh, um, oh, a little suspense. A little like (laughs) a little creative writing here from Tony Jones. Um, I don't think he's going to bust because I don't think that. I, I think he does too much. Um. And he reminds me a lot of Josh Giddy, who has turned out to be a really good NBA player. But, you know, I I can see the worry around Anthony Black. Um, And it's not so much that he can't shoot. It's he's different from the Thompson Twins because, right, the Thompson Twins can't shoot. But they eat up space if you gap them and they just finish over you. And they have the athleticism to finish over you. And they have the athleticism to finish around the rim. The problem with Anthony Black is that not only is he not a shooter at this point, but he's a reluctant scorer, and he's reluctant to look at the basket. And uh, I think that he has a chance to be a fantastic NBA playmaker because I think that he is really good in the pick-and-roll game. And what people don't realize is that everything in the NBA is pick-and-roll. It's pick-and-roll, pick-and-roll, pick-and-roll. Can you exist out of pick and roll. Can you make the right reads? Can you make the right plays? It's the it's one of the real reasons why I'm so high on Jalen Hushafino because I think that he's going to be an excellent pick and roll player uh, in the league. And he has he, are, he has a floater that he can get to. He gets to the basket and he has an assortment of finishes that he can get to even though he plays under the rim. But Anthony Black, he hasn't developed, you know, he gets into the lane and his pass, 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 pass. And he's got to look at the rim and he's got to balance that out. And if he can't balance that out, then, you know, he's going to have some problems in the league, despite the fact that he's 6'8", despite the fact that he's an excellent pick and roll talent, despite the fact that he's a terrific defender, despite the fact that he's really good athletically, uh, a lot better athletically. And despite the fact that Arkansas 
was pretty much plus 15 points for 100 possessions. See, numbers, uh, Arkansas was plus 15 points for 100 possessions this year with him on the floor. So the Razorbacks clearly play better with him on the floor. But when he gets to the NBA level, he's got to look at the basket to score. Otherwise, teams are just going to play off of him. They're not going to respect uh, the ability to score. And you know how that ends up. You turn into Dante Axum. I don't want I mean, or you turn into Isaac Okoro, right? Like, I mean, we were watching the playoffs. Like, if you can't shoot, right. you can't play. Right. And and it's not that Isaac Okoro can't shoot. He can't get into anything else. People say you can't shoot, you can't shoot, you can't shoot. Well, John Morant can't, couldn't shoot a lick his first two years, but, I mean, he could score because he ate up space and he just finished over you. And, you know, when he gets into the line, if you can't shoot from – if you can't shoot from above the arc, then you have to have something you can get to. So if you have a floater, get to your floater. You can score that way. It's like Chris Dunn. Chris Dunn can't shoot above the arc, but he gets to his floater. He found a way to play offense in the NBA. And that's what I'm worried about with Anthony Black. So when you talk bust, I don't think Anthony Black will be a bust if he gets drafted by the Utah Jazz because I'm betting on Utah's develop development and ability to develop. But if Anthony Black goes somewhere where they don't develop guys, he might be in a little bit of trouble. And anybody that's else? where you get your bus from. Is there anybody else that makes you nervous? Um, so Anthony Black will make me nervous. I think Cam Whitmore. Oh, interesting. Well, he makes me nervous from the perspective of he hasn't developed yet as a playmaker for others. And it's the same thing, right? If everybody knows that you're going to shoot and you're not going to pass, then they play you one way, right? So, you know, the when I look at Cam Whitmore, he's six foot six, six foot seven. He's got a he's a fantastic athlete. He's really an elite athlete, and he's got a real NBA body at this point. And his self creation is there. That's real. The shooting is there. That's real. But what's also real is the lack of playmaking for others. So here's the question that we have to answer, ask this self, ask ourselves, is this a product of, of him playing not for Jay Wright and not playing with, you know, teammates who could put the ball in the basket, playing for Kyle Neptune, who, you know, they Villanova really struggled um, uh, offensively in that system, or is it the fact that he doesn't look for others? So, you know, you you look at that, and these are all questions that you know. If you're a team in a lottery, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to try to answer your for your. Oh, Tony just disappeared. Where did Tony go? Some great stuff from Tony so far. We'll hit pause right here, and see what happens to bring him back. We still have got some more things to discuss, so we'll see what we can find out more with Tony Jones ahead because he just. He's in a hotel, and the hotel just, he just evaporated. Oh, he's back. You evaporated into thin air right there. And <laughs> disappeared. And I was, like, all prepared to bring you back. All right. Uh, I think we got a good answer on Cam Whitmore there. I think we got a good answer on Anthony Black. So let me move to the next question just because it's too hard to kind of continue when that happens. Uh, if the Jazz slip to 10, I, I think it's an interesting discussion if you're a Jazz fan, by the way. Are you willing to slip to 10 just to screw the Mavericks? Um, and instead of being nine, if the Jazz slip to 10, is that a big deal? Is there a breaking point somewhere in this draft if the Jazz end up 10 tonight instead of nine? I think it's a deal because I think there are nine terrific prospects, like Victor Wimbayama, Scoot Henderson, Brandon Miller, the Thompson Twins, Jarris Walker, Taylor Hendricks, Anthony Black, Cam Whitmore. Those are nine guys that if the Jazz got any one of those nine guys, I'm like, okay, You've got a guy that has um, – that if everything goes right, like if everything hits, that guy is a star. Now, obviously, things don't always go right. Things don't always hit. People don't always turn into stars. But there are nine guys that I think that if everything hits right, they're gonna, you, you've got a star. And – so if the if the Jazz slip to ten, here's the thing. I like Case and Wallace quite a bit. Six foot, six foot nine wingspan, terrific defender, knows how to play offense, can pitch it, uh, gets into the lane, has a floater to get to, and he's a Kentucky guard. Kentucky guards typically show well and fare well in the NBA. Um, you know, Shy Gilders Alexander. 
uh, Devin Booker, the list goes on and on. So, you know, Case and Wallace would be a 10. And then, you know, I have Jalen Hushafino at number 11 on my board. I know that people don't look at him that high, um, but I have him, I have him around number 11 on my board. And then after that, then, you know, it's just kind of, you know, I, you know, first of all, I think Leonard Miller might get up and, and get in a 12. Uh, Kobe Bufkin out of uh, out of Michigan can can be up there as well. But, you know, then after that, it's, it's, it, you're, you're dealing with not a consensus, but, you know, just how people feel about a certain prospect. So, you know, I think if you're if you're nine, if you're the Jazz, I think that you're really safe. I know some people have it at eight because they don't buy they don't buy Anthony Black. I buy Anthony Black. Um, but if you're nine for me, I think that you're, you're absolutely fine if you're the Jazz. And I, there's also a level, if you're 10, you might be fine because somebody jumps, right? Somebody slips. Like, it's not right. It's, not, it's unlikely right. that it holds, holds to that order um, in that sense. If the Jazz get two, who are they taking? Um, I still think, you know, I, I think it's, it's closer than people think. But I still, uh, I, you know, Scoot Henderson would be in the poll. Because I, I don't think that you can, you know, pass pass up on that kind of dynamic uh, at point guard. I mean, he's a dynamic, dynamic athlete. Um, I think one thing that people overlook with Stuart Henderson is how big his hands are. Uh, he's got John Stockton hands. Um, and, you know, and, and the shooting has come around uh, to, to go with the athleticism. And, and this guy is a dog. So, you know, I don't know if you can pass on, you know, getting a guy to be to to be your franchise point guard for the next 10 years. He's Tony Jones. We'll talk about the Jazz upcoming season. 26 says 35, but I meant 36 or 46 wins for the Jazz next year. And who does he think their point guard will be on this roster? We'll talk about those things with TJ as we continue here on Locked on Jazz. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at Game Time. The Game Time app solves all those problems you've had when looking to buy tickets for an event. Game time, photos from the seat, app, tickets come right to you. All the things, all the stress that you do when you're buying late game tickets or late moment tickets is solved by the game time app. Flash deals, last minute tickets, easy to find and buy tickets from every kind of event in your area. Images of seat view, lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, job loss protection. I mean, they're going to all the way for you. The game time guarantees means you always get the best price if you find tickets in the same seats, in the same section or row for less. Game time will credit you 110% of the difference. You buy tickets in a matter of seconds, two taps, and you're set. Tickets are set directly to your phone so you don't have to dig through your email. Go right now to download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code LOCKEDONNBA for $20. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Thanks very much for making Locked on Jazz your first listen of the day today. We are free and available on all podcasting apps for your second listen. Locked on NBA or our good friend Rafael Barlow and Leaf Tulin are at the Combine right now giving you all the breakdown of Locked on NBA Big Board. By the way, Rafael Barlow had this super interesting interview the other day with Casey Wallace about how when Rafael used to watch him in 7th and 8th grade, he'd never shoot. I'll tell you what, Raphael puts in a lot of work and I, I respect um, the heck out of the work that he puts in, not only around this time, but he's done it, you know, all year, all just all year. And I've had, you know, countless conversations with him um, uh, over the course of the year about pro prospects that we like, prospects that we don't like, you know, whether we're locking step on a prospect whether we disagree on a prospect. So I have a ton of respect for, for what he does, and he's just doing a terrific job. All right, I need to give, we need to give a little shout-out. Two days off Mother's Day, we're going to give a little shout-out. And to two of your four most favorite women in your life, Get let me see the shirt. Let's see the shirt. It looks like a Memphis Grizzlies shirt. It's not. What is it? It's Morgan State. Go Bears. Tell me about your mom, because I love this. Your mom is incredible. Tell everybody about your mom. My mom is the Dean of Journalism at Morgan State University, and she is uh, an incredible woman. She uh, um, at one point was uh, one of only seven uh, black women city editors uh, in the country at a major at a major daily newspaper. 
Uh, she worked at, she was a city editor at the New York Post, I mean, at Washington Post. Uh, she worked at New York Newsday. She was, uh, she was uh, a managing editor at the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Uh, and now she's, um, you know, imparting her wisdom on the next generation uh, as she leads the uh, the Morgan State Journalism Department. So shout out to to uh, Jackie Jones and happy Mother's Day and I love you. And your daughter's there right now as well under the yeah. watchful eye of grandma, which is pretty uh, My daughter is is a freshman at Morgan State, uh, Kelsey Jones, and she's a part of the journalism department. So shout out, Kelsey. Pretty awesome. I love that. I love it. All right. Oh, but I, I got to tell you, I got, you know, so shout out to my daughter, my eighth grader, uh, Courtney Jones, who will graduate uh, from the eighth grade uh, from St. Vincent School, class of 2023, on Friday. So I will cover uh, games one and games two, games one and two of Denver, uh, Los Angeles, in Denver. I will fly home on Friday uh, to be with the family to uh, celebrate Courtney, and I will fly to Los Angeles in time for game three on, on, on Saturday. I'm glad you're doing that. Good for you. Congratulations. Great, great family. Good stories. Love it. Uh, Jazz win 26, 36, or 46 next year? Um, You know, I mean, heading into the offseason, you know, you know, I'm looking at them at, at 36. But depending on what happens in the offseason, um, you know, there's some upside from there. Um, you know, I happen to think that uh, Walker Kessler means a lot when it comes to winning, it's especially in the regular season. I, you know, I don't know what it means in the playoffs just because of the nature of, of rim protecting bigs and, and how teams are able to scheme against those guys, scheme against that archetype in the postseason. But if you play Walker, Kessler, uh, 77 games or 75 games or whatever, and, and he plays 30 minutes a night for 75 games, I think the Jazz are going to win a lot of games. A lot to that. I, I've said 26. And and he, just hear me out. So, and it's not, I've said 26 while well, understanding that Will Hardy, Walker Kessler, and Larry Market might be too good for 26. But my thought is that I don't know who starts for point guard for the Utah Jazz, but let's say it's Chris Dunn and that they draft Cason Wallace. Okay. Not a crazy concept. And that they draft 16th pick as a power forward. Or maybe they draft. Uh, a power forward with 10, they draft Keontae George with 16. By the 41st game of the season, I think there's a chance the Jazz are playing two rookies and two second-year players in their rotation with Lowry Markkinen as your primary rotation. If you do that, nothing wrong with that. I actually think this is good. There's nothing, make sure I'm clear, like just because the, I actually think this would be maybe the right thing to do. I think you end up winning 26 games. Well, I think the pushback from that is that they did that this year and they were too good for 26 games. Okay. Uh, yeah, they also did this with Jordan Clarkson and Mike Conley. And there were a lot of veteran, like they, they had a lot of games played when the year started and they had a lot, like I always look at the beginning of the year, who has 240 minutes of action or not right now. Do you right. really, does your roster really have 240 minutes? They were close. I mean, minus Rudy Gay, I had them at like 226 when the year started as NBA rotation minutes, there's a chance they're far below that next year. Just rookies generally get counted as like close to zero. So let, let's go through, let's go through the rotation that we reasonably know will be there. And I don't think we can include Chris Dunn because he's got to make the team. So, so who's your point guard? So what we reasonably think is that Taylor Horton Tucker will pick up his player option and because that's eleven million dollars, and that's a lot. Think he will see. That's interesting. You probably know more than I do. I thought he might not because I don't think he ever gets a thirty-game stretch again in his career where he played as much as he just did. Well, I think eleven million dollars is a lot to leave on the table as a player option, and I think that he showed enough this year um, that even if he doesn't play next year, he's going to be in the NBA. He's twenty-two years old, right? So. Let's say Taylor Horton. Up, let's say Taylor picks up his player option. Um, um, let's say Ochai Abaji makes, you know, a regular rookie sophomore leap. Um, then the question is, you know, is Lowry Markkinen was the all? He didn't make All NBA, but he had an All NBA year. Was the All NBA season? Is that real? Um, 100%. 
I didn't so, see, I gotta say, I didn't see anything in this season. That, and I actually think the most interesting thing about this season with Lowry is you could track it back. You could like, oh wow, look, there was a 15 game stretch here. There was a 25 game stretch here. You you could find signs of this once you looked back. You, you I'm not saying we knew it was coming, but once it was happening, you could look back and say, oh oh, this actually makes sense when you look at oh Fe- February of his rookie year, he averaged 24 nine and six whatever as a rookie, right? Like there were all those stretches that said to me, oh, this is real. Right. So. Kelly Olenek is Kelly Olenek. You know, we reasonably think, reasonably think, barring a trade, he'll be back. And, you know, I think Walker Kessler is, you know, one of the, the, the five to ten most impactful defensive players uh, in the NBA. I think, I think that much of him. So, right now, one of the reasons why the Jazz were so competitive, even as they, even as they stripped away pieces, toward the end of the year was because when you played Ochai Abaji, Lowry Markin, and, and Walker Kessler all together, you had three guys that very typically on almost every night were more athletic, bigger, faster, longer than than their primary than their primary matchup. And if you put that around, so then you supplement that, you have Colin Sexton coming back. Um you roll so that's six guys. So then, who beyond those six um, that that we know of, you know that that we think that's that's reasonably going to be there. Plus the coaching staff, I think Will Hardy, um, you know, really showed himself to be a really really good coach. And also, you took him away from the Celtics, and you've seen you know some of the struggles that the Celtics have had uh, in, in in that area as well. So, you know. I just think that, you know, I think that the Jazz are going to try to win next year. Uh, I don't think that, you know, this is, you know, I mean, obviously everything is development and development is not linear, but it's not going to be, you know, one of those youth movement things. But let's say they get, you know, let's say they get lucky and Taylor Hendricks slips to nine because I think Taylor Hendricks might go five. You know, then all of a sudden you have Taylor Hendricks, then you take 16, maybe you take a Jalen Hushafino, maybe something like that. Um, but the, the the point is, for me, I just think that there's just too much there for them to be 26. I would put their baseline at 36, and, you know, I think that the Jazz are going to be um, active in a lot of trade discussion uh, just because of how many assets that they have. And I think that around the league, I think there's going to be a mandate for, for, for teams around the league. Not a mandate, but I think teams around the league are going to try to stay under that or get under that uh, second uh, tax apron in time so that they don't get dinged in the future. Um, so I think the trade market is going to be crazy uh, this summer. And, and I think that the Jazz is going to be right in the middle of it. Uh, I want your quick thoughts on one last player. And the lottery could have a big impact on this I'm super intrigued by Jalen Suggs because Orlando has too many guys. They kind of turned it to Markel Fultz. They turned Suggs into like a Royce O'Neal like wing who just stood there for the last half of the season. He's had his shooting in his first two years is so bad that you actually cannot find a historical comp of a player that actually turns around and gets better. And yet something about him when I watch like if I was, I think I might like do everything I could to go get him. Like there's something about him that I am super intrigued by. I this is a wild card. This is kind of my like pet peeve, my pet project here. What's your thought on him as a player? I would acquire him if I thought that I could play him at point guard for 70 games a year. Uh, I don't like him as a two guard or or small forward or whatever, wherever <laughs> or wherever Orlando was playing him. Um, I like him as a point guard. And so the, the thought is if you reasonably think he's a point guard, um, then go get him. And if you reasonably don't think he's a point guard, then there's no reason to have him on your roster. Um, and Orlando clearly does not think he's a point guard. Right. And yet they still have him on the roster and they still have, but that's because they draft him fourth. So if you second draft him, would then, you trade would you trade the ninth pick for him? Oh, absolutely not. Oh. No. God, no. 
his value is not as a ninth pick. You trade I don't, the 16th pick and a future for him. No. I would just go ahead and draft somebody and try to develop that person. Because Orlando can't give him up for less than that because they got to save face, right? Yeah. So you might be stuck with him. Go ahead. Good luck in those extension talks. Right. No, I mean, Orlando <laughs> wants – Orlando – Gets off them so they don't have to do the extension, right? So they they, they get off them so that it's not that they're because you can't like not pick up the extension on the number five pick of a draft. You don't have a choice. You have right. to, like right. unless it's like Jalil Okafor, I guess is probably the last one that didn't get picked up that early. Uh, uh, did he not get picked up? No, he did not get picked up. You're okay. right. Yeah, I think he's the last one. So all right, TJ, so they drafted MB and he and MB right. popped. Right. All right. I said you were great to start. You fulfilled that standard. Thanks for your time. I miss seeing you. Um, miss I don't you know, too, my guy. You should go to lunch or do something before September or October because it's nice to see you. Congratulations to your daughter for her graduation. I'll be the one crying in the corner for the graduation a week later. <laughs> um, a lot of crying in the corner a week later when I have to say goodbye to mine. So I feel you. And uh, ha have a great one. Enjoy the uh, Denver LA series, Denver, and how many? Um, I mean, I'm not so. I, let's say seven. I'm going five. You're going five. I don't I think, think it's close. I don't think it's going to be that easy. All right, we'll see. Usually, I'm wrong. You're right, so we'll see. Uh, He's Cody Jones. Enjoy it tomorrow. We'll be reacting to the lottery. Remember, six o'clock tonight. Locked on NBA lottery party. Getting voted off Survivor Island when your team shows up. And remember tonight, the key thing is you want to hear everybody you're supposed to hear up till nine, and then you don't want to hear Utah. <laughs> don't want to hear Utah at 10. You don't want to hear Utah at nine either. You don't want to hear And when you don't hear Utah at nine, start screaming and going crazy and going bananas and then recollect and start dreaming of Victor. Have a great day. Talk to everybody later.